Can I tell you a secret? Do you want to know how to generate weekly or monthly income through options for free? If the answer is yes, then this video is created just for you. Hi, my name is Darren and I have been investing and trading in options since 2008 and I help investors and traders understand how options work by creating tutorials that explain the basics of options as well as various option trading strategies that can be implemented to generate passive income. Today, I'll be talking about an option selling strategy known as the cash secured put. This is a common strategy implemented by many option sellers out there in the market to generate passive weekly or monthly income and at the end of my sharing I'll go through a case study of a put that I have done that is aspiring this month as well as show you the exact steps in selling a put. The usual disclaimers, options can be risky and one can potentially lose more than the initial capital if executed wrongly. If you are someone new to options, I will always recommend learning the basics to options and paper trading first before using real money to trade. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let me first share the difference between buying a put option and selling a put option. When we trade options, we are either the buyer or the seller of an option. A put option contract gives the option buyer the right but not the obligation to sell an underlying security which in our case is a stock at a predetermined price known as a strike price on or before a predetermined expiration date. What this simply means is that if you were to buy a put option, you are paying premium upfront to own a contract. And this contract gives you the right to sell 100 shares at a price that is predetermined on or before a predetermined date. However, please note that the option buyer is not forced to sell shares at the predetermined price, also known as the strike price. He can choose whether he wants to exercise this right or not. That choice is primarily up to him. Therefore, when you were to purchase a put option, you'll notice that the premium of that contract will generally tend to rise when the price of the stock drops. People normally buy a put when they are bearish on a stock or if they need some protection to the downside. Now, when we sell a put option, we will receive premium upfront and will now have the obligation to buy 100 of the underlying stock at the strike price on or before that predetermined date. This will mean that on or before the put option's expiration date, if the buyer of the put option exercises his right to sell his shares, we, as the option seller, will be obligated to buy those shares at the predetermined strike price. Therefore, in summary, a put option buyer will pay premium so that he has the right to sell shares at a predetermined price and a put option seller will receive premiums up front and will have an obligation to buy shares at a predetermined price should the put option buyer exercise his rights. In order to understand why people sell put options, we have to understand the impact of volatility and time on an option's premium. Stocks that experience huge fluctuations tend to have options that are relatively more pricey as compared to stocks that do not fluctuate much. In addition, options that expire within the next few days tend to be much cheaper than options that expire within the next few months. When we sell an option, we are primarily hoping to earn from 1. A drop in a stock's volatility or 2. Time decay. In order to understand how to profit from selling puts, we must first understand that a stock can move in three directions. A stock can go up, it can go down or it can remain neutral. Neutral here means that it just goes up, down, up, down and ends around the same price. If the stock were to go above the strike, what will happen? Nothing. This means that the market price of the stock is higher than the strike price of the contract. And since everyone will want to sell their shares at a higher price, therefore the put option buyer will not exercise his contract and that contract will expire worthless. If the stock were to drop below the strike, what will happen? The put option buyer will exercise his right to sell the shares at the strike price which is higher than the current trading price of the stock and earn a profit of the strike minus the current trading price and the premiums used to pay for the put options. You guys following so far? So let's say if the stock were to drop below the strike, does that mean that you have lost money? Not necessarily. As you have already collected premium upfront, therefore your break even will be the strike and your brokerage charges minus the initial premium collected upfront. Hence, if the break even is more than the current trading price of the stock, you will still be in the green. So now let's get to the exciting part. Why sell a put? 
The main reason why I like selling puts as opposed to buying shares is because, let's say I'm looking at the stock right now and the price that it is currently trading is above what I would like to pay, I can sell a put at a price that I'm comfortable of paying and wait. If the stock is above the strike at expiration, I will have collected the premiums up front and if the stock were to drop below the strike, I'll be buying it at a price that is within my expectations anyway. To me, that is a win-win situation. In addition, with the introduction of weekly options, also known as weeklies, you can now sell puts that expire the next week. This gives the option of earning passive income on a week-by-week -week basis. However, one thing to note, the premiums you get when you sell weeklies tend to be very little. I personally prefer selling options that expire within the next two to three months, as this will allow me to be able to get a better strike and yet earn a decent premium. So let's assume I do not know how to sell puts. In such a situation, I will only have two choices. I can either wait for the stock to drop and reach my target price or just buy it above the price that I'm comfortable in paying. Of course, let's be honest here. Every option strategy comes with risk and I think it's important to understand the risk of selling puts. Firstly, if you were to sell a put and not have sufficient funds in your option account, then you run the risk of a margin call. This happens when the price of the stock falls and you have not enough funds in your account to cover the cost of buying the shares. Another risk will be being assigned stocks at a bad price. And lastly, you risk back holding a lot of weak stocks. I would like to share my experience as a put seller. So I have been actively selling puts for a while and what I realized is that stocks that are rich in premium tend to be very volatile. And during such a strategy for a long period of time has left me back holding a lot of my weaker stock picks where stocks that I've identified to be good are out of my portfolio. I would like to share that it's always best to sell puts on stocks that you are personally comfortable in owning for the long term. When you start, it is always tempting to sell puts on highly volatile stocks due to the rich premiums. For example, meme stocks. However, if you get assigned to any of these stocks, like I mentioned earlier, you run the risk of back holding for a very long time. Trust me, I've been back holding names like Solo, ASTS, Sophie for the longest time. And also always ensure to do a cash secured put. This would mean ensuring sufficient cash in your account so that in the event of assignment, you will not get a margin call. And when we have a good run, we tend to be very complacent and take more risks than we can handle. And this can result in us selling naked puts. Another thing to probably take note is if you are very conservative and sell a put with a strike that's very out of the money, your option premium will be very little. One way to counter this will be to sell puts that expire in the next two to three months. This will give you a good buffer and allow you to sell puts at a comfortable strike. Let's talk about a profit-taking strategy that I use. In the past, I used to hold my sold puts to maturity. However, nowadays, I realize that besides just waiting for expiration, you can close your sold put positions once it earns around 50 to 70% of the premium. And you do that by buying the close that position. This will take risk off the table and you can then have cash to perform another sold put. So let's head down to a case study of a put that I've sold on BWA. As you can see, this sold put will expire on the 17th of December in 2021 with a strike of 50. The premium that I get will be $4.10. Therefore, my break even will be $50 minus $4.10, which is $45.90. As of today, BWA is below 50, hence I will most probably be assigned 100 BWA shares. Once I'm assigned, my options will be to 1. Sell it immediately. 2. Hold the stocks. Or 3. Sell a call against the stocks, also known as a covered call. As the fundamentals of the stock has not changed, I will definitely not sell the stock. Hence, I'll most probably wait for the stock to go up a little and sell a call against the stock. This is known as a covered call. And I'll share more about this strategy in my upcoming video. As promised, I'll now show you how to sell a put on my Think or Swim mobile app. The first step is to find the option chain on the ticker symbol that you wish to sell a put on. For this example, I will use Ford. Now let's find a strike and maturity that gives us a decent premium. So let's choose Ford that matures on the 18th of February, which is around two months from now. If I were to choose a strike of $20, the premium I'll get is $1.15, which works out to $115 per contract. So if I were to sell one contract, I'll need to ensure that I have $1,885, which is basically $2,000 minus $115 in my account. Now we click bid and next. 
adjust the number of contracts that you wish to sell. If it's just one contract, then always ensure that it is a negative one. Do note that it has to be negative if you are selling a contract. If it's a positive one, then you'll be buying a put. Once that is done, head down to TIF, which just means time in force, and choose either day or GTC, which means good to cancel. For me, I'll usually click day. Next, you click review and you'll notice the cost of the trade is a credit of $114.35. This is the amount that you will get after netting 65 cents of commission. So your return will be roughly $114.35 divided by $1,885, which is approximately 6% for two months. Once you've reviewed everything, just click send. And there, my friends, is how you sell a put. Okay, guys, now that I've covered how to sell puts on stocks for passive income, I would like to pass a question over to you. What type of stocks are you looking at right now to sell puts on? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys have been getting value from this video, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. See you.